So this show, as you know, we talk about all types of things with life. And some things just aren't that great to talk about, but they are a part of life. I used to be one of those people that thought, it would never happen to me. That happens to people you hear, they they tell you this, some story and... Uh, it sucks, man. I could imagine, oh, that would really suck, you know, getting your car stolen. But that wouldn't happen to me. No, not me. And then it happens to you and you realize, man, that's life. That's just what happens sometimes. And so now let's get into my story on how I got my truck stolen. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. It's so sad. I know. But honestly, it's just something that really sucks. There's no silver lining in it at all, really. It's just something that happens, and you just have to deal with it. So let's go all the way back to before I even bought this truck and the reason why I needed to buy a vehicle. Not necessarily a truck, but that's what I wound up buying. It was a cold, rainy day. I think it was December 11th in 2007. I went to pick up my brother because he got done with his shift at Taco Bell at the time. My girlfriend at the time called me. And uh, stupid me, I decided to just pick up the phone and talk to her while we were driving in December rainy weather in the Midwest. And uh, it's not really a good thing to do. My car was a 77 Caprice Chevrolet, and sometimes my car would die (laughs) in the middle of trying to turn onto an intersection or cars passing by, then all of a sudden you're trying to merge onto the ramp and then it dies, you know. Uh, I had plenty of nice little scares as a teenager and in my early 20s driving that thing around, but I worked on it the best I could to make it, but regardless... It was acting up again, driving on the way home, talking to my girlfriend on the phone, and we get to a stop sign, and we got to make a left onto this road, and to my right, the road goes up a hill a little bit that we're trying to turn onto, so uh, it's going downhill, we're making a left to continue on down the hill. Anyways, it's rainy. I look to my right for a second as I have the phone up to my ear. And I see lights very far off. And I'm like, oh, I have time to make this turn before the car comes. I start turning onto the road. My car kind of sputters. And next thing I know, I hear my brother yell, they're going to hit us or something to that effect. This car, it was a Jeep Cherokee, I think, if I remember correctly, hits us, passenger side, front passenger side, right by the uh, front passenger side wheel. The right side of my car smacks into the left side of their vehicle. Oh, this woman that hit me was the most god-awful person. Even in uh, having getting into a uh, car accident, I can understand people are very upset, I wasn't even upset. I was just like, okay. Like, I guess how most things happen to me that's bad, I'm always like, okay, yeah, this sucks. Crying, whining about it, yelling about it isn't going to help anything. But I always think that's useless and just causes more uh, frustration than anything. So I'll just be like, all right, here's my information, blah, blah, blah. And she gave me every, she called me everything in the book. Luckily, she had another friend that wasn't screwed up on something. I think this woman was screwed up on... She was she was acting crazy because her friend was like, Yeah, she's... I don't know. I, I don't know. Uh. Long story short, I wound up getting the ticket. It was my fault because failure to yield. But the way I saw it is, I turned onto that road when she was very far away. So she had to be speeding. But anyways... My car is out of commission, completely totaled. I need a new vehicle because I need something to get to work, obviously. The next couple weeks go by. Christmas time, I spent it without having a vehicle. And it was like early January 2008. Looking around, 
my price range was anything between a thousand dollars to I don't know whatever I could get a loan for. You, you know, it's you're a young guy. You're like 22. What else are you going to be able to afford and get? Unless you have a rich family that's going to hook you up with, you know, a free car. Uh, that that wasn't an option for me, obviously. So my mom has this thing about Suburbans. Or I don't know if she did or not, but she drove by this house. And uh, in this driveway of this house, there was a Suburban parked, like from 1981 or something. You know, something from the late 70s, early 80s. She drove me there to look at it. And they wanted eight thousand dollars for it, and I'm looking at, it, I'm like, I don't know if I really want to drive a suburban though. You know, like, what do I need a suburban for? I'm a young guy. All I need is just something to drive me from point A to B. I don't care about like. So I said no on the suburban, especially for eight grand. I was like, uh, no. You know, funny story about that suburban though is every single time I drive past that house, that suburban. It's been, what, 12 years now since we looked at it when they had it up for sale. It's still sitting there. The for sale sign's gone, but it's still sitting there (laughs) in the same damn spot. It's crazy. I think once I drive past that house and I see that the Suburban's gone, I'll uh, throw a little party. So we looked a little bit more. Craigslist, all that. I didn't want to go to a car dealer because you go to a car dealer, even buying a used car... um, I was going to pay at least $5,000, something like that, which I thought I, no, <laughs> 3000 is my limit, okay? Anyways, on Craigslist, I was looking, and I found this truck, and it was out in the middle of nowhere, and this truck had a little over 40,000 miles on it from 1991. Showed my dad, showed my mom, and they all said, yeah, you buy that truck? That truck will last you for about 20 years. And I'm like, that's all I care about. I want to buy something, drive it to the wheels fall off. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care how fast it goes. I just want something to take me from point A to B. So we go out and we look at it. Everything looks great. The guys that own it, you know, it's that old classic story we have all, you know, Yeah, it was an old man who owned it, and he just drove it to church and back, or to the grocery store and back, and kept in pristine condition, all that. As much as I didn't, you know, want a truck, uh, it was something, you know, that seemed decent compared to all the other cars out there that were being sold by regular people, you know. And plus, I thought it would be good, too, because after I moved back home from my radio gig, a truck is very handy when you need to move things, so... Anyways, they were wanting $5,500 for it, and obviously I didn't have $5,500, but I put a down payment on, I think I had like $1,100. So I gave them $1,100, or $1,200 right then and there, and uh, I took a loan out for the rest. And me having a loan for the first time, it, uh, I was like, let's pay this off as fast as possible. I don't want, you know, nobody owning me. <laughs> Silly to think about now with how much uh, I owe uh, on plenty of things. But uh, so to give you a visual of what my truck looked like, it looked like an old man's truck. It had a camper shell on the back of it, runners on each side of the doors. So if you have a hard time getting in to the uh, truck, you could step on the runner and uh, get, give yourself a little boost into the truck. I didn't put any of this stuff on. It came with the truck, but get this. It also had handlebars on each side of the doors, on the back of the door. So you could grab onto the handlebar, then open up the door and jump in. Anyways, so that's what the truck looked like. Chevy Silverado, 1991. 40-something thousand miles on it. 43, I think. And I was set. This thing's going to last me forever, you know. I could haul things easily. Very convenient because at the time I was in a band and I could just put up my entire drum set in the back. Along with the camper shell, so even if it was raining it still didn't get wet. Nothing I put back there would get wet. So it was, it was great. I would drive around in it and people think there's an old man in it. But, you know, did I care what other people thought when I'd be driving it around? No. And also in the truck there was uh, plenty of... Um, 
young man and young woman things happening in it. Lots of things happen in the truck. Would haul the gear whenever we go on band, you know, journeys, playing gigs in St. Louis. And I think I had it for 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011. So almost three and a half years I had this thing. And we'll get to now when my trusty truck met its uh, final goodbye, waved its final goodbye to me. I was visiting a friend in New York. I'd usually fly up there. Most of my friend's family were unavailable to really take me. So what I would do usually, most of the time when I'd make these trips, I would make multiple trips throughout the year up to visit. And So what I would usually do would park my truck in the long-term parking area of a station that was nearby, and I would catch a ride on the train that goes straight to the airport. So I'd just park my truck, take my carry-on bag with me, ride the train straight into the airport, get to New York, rent the car, drive, pick up my friend, we do our things. After a few days, I come back and go about my life. And I did it so many times. Park it in the long-term parking, get out, make sure everything's locked, look up, oh, make sure you're right there in a camera's view. There's plenty of security cameras everywhere. Oh, this is foolproof. It's, you know, you're you're fine. Everything's going to be great. Come July 2011, it's weird. It's like 10 years ago, exactly to the month. I go visit my friend in New York and come back after a few days. And now, mind you, right before I went on this trip in July 2011, I put new tires on my truck. And tires on a truck, I hate it now that I it cost me almost $700 to put new tires on my car, let alone truck. Ugh. So 10 years ago, new tires on a truck would cost me about $800, probably $850 after tax, something like that. So you almost have to shell out a whole grand to make sure your truck has new tires on it. It's ridiculous. So yeah, two weeks before, got new tires put on my truck, and I'm going on another adventure visiting my friend in New York. I drive my truck, as always, to the long-term parking at the metro station. Now, mind you, everybody, that in my truck by now, after three some odd years of doing everything in it, I had quite the uh, uh, collection of things inside my truck at all times that I needed. Now, one was my toolbox, a jack, everything that you would need if you were broken down, I had. Spare tire... And in my the cabin of my truck, I had all kinds of things from, you know, sentimental things I had in the back se- back behind the seat and, uh, you know, mementos, little things here and there I collect, I'd put up on my dashboard or whatever. And the real kicker was that I had about six or seven Beavis and Butthead books from back in the day that had like jokes and stuff in it. I kept in a sack and I gave them to somebody to borrow because they wanted to read them and they gave them back to me and I just put them in my truck. I parked my truck in this long term parking with all my little mementos, my toolbox, everything in my truck. And the funny thing is, for some odd reason, something in my brain had told me something. But I thought to myself, before I left to take my work keys out of there because my work keys are very, very hard to get duplicates of. So I thought uh, there's be no reason for me to have my work keys in my truck while I'm going on this trip. So I just took them out and I set them in the house, in my house before I left. Early morning, park my truck in the long-term parking Make sure everything's locked, pull on all the doors and, you know, pull on the back of the camper shell and make sure that's locked and back windows locked on it and everything else. And yeah, everything's sealed up, ready to go. All right. Grab my little walk-on luggage and I go on my happy ass way, get on that train and head to the airport. Have a blast in New York. Oh, it's just the greatest time. Ah, yeah, so much fun. A couple days later... 
I have work the next morning. Get off the train. It's, you know, nighttime, probably around 7 or 8 o'clock, something like that. And I start making my way towards the long-term parking. Now, mind you, the long-term parking area is right up against a uh, major road in the city. But it's kind of uh, blocked by a hill. So if you walk through the long-term parking, you'll have to walk up a hill. And up the hill is where the major road is. And also, the offices for the train station are all right there. Along with security cameras, everything. I make my way to the long-term parking lot and start looking around. My truck isn't anywhere to be found. Okay. And I knew exactly where I parked it. Now, there's rows and rows of parking spots. There's probably 200 possible parking spots that you could park at, but there's maybe two cars parked elsewhere scattered throughout this long-term parking lot. Did my truck just disappear because at this moment in time when you go to the place you know you parked your vehicle and you don't see it there many scenarios go through your mind and each one seems ridiculous but seem possible as you're trying to process what has just happened (laughs) because you're just confused you know So I turn around and I'm looking for Ashton Kutcher to see if I've been punked or something. You know, in a a perfect world, you would think, oh, (laughs) oh, you got me. Oh, I was really worried. (laughs) In my head, I actually thought that could have possibly been a scenario because you're just confused and your heart rate's getting up and adrenaline's going. So you're, you're, you're just in a different, you know, mindset after this. I start looking at the other vehicles in the parking lot, too, and I'm like, okay, is my truck somewhere else? Did someone, did my brother or my dad, who had an extra set of car keys, uh, just decide to show up and drive my truck and park it in a different spot just to mess with me? My family, they don't, they wouldn't have the time nor care to do something like that. So, but illogically, that's what I thought that could have been a scenario. I looked on the ground where my truck was parked, playing investigator, uh, trying to find clues to see, was there a magic trick happened? Did David Blaine come by? Uh, I look and there's no glass shattered anywhere. There's no, nothing. There's no evidence that a vehicle was even there at any point. And at this time, I have a Motorola Razor cell phone. I didn't have a smartphone or anything, and it was always dying. I was always trying to breathe life into it because the battery was just complete crap. But luckily, these light poles in the parking lot had an electrical outlet you could plug in. So I had my phone charger with me because I took that along for the trip, and I plugged it in. Got some juice into my phone to be able to call somebody. The first person I called was my dad. So, Dad, did you happen to stop by this metro station and um, drive my truck home and park it at, back at home or something or whatever? And my dad's just like, what? Uh, no. What, was something wrong? I said, yeah, um, my, my truck isn't here. <laughs> then I called my brother, who's, you know, he could get into some mischief. I said, hey, Dean, um, did you do anything with my truck? No, why the hell would I do that? And he said, you know, something to that effect. And I'm like, okay, so you didn't. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm like, okay, well, apparently my truck's gone. And I don't know, well, you better call the police. And I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm going to do next. So, and I think my brother was out. And I think my dad was living in a different town. So I figured I'd just hike tail a ride with uh, the cops, take me back home or whatever. So I call the police station and I say, I'd like to report uh, my truck being stolen. I, th- I think that's what happened. <laughs> and they say, okay, where are you at? I tell them I'm at the metro station in this city, this stop, blah, blah, blah. Because there's plenty of stops throughout this city and the whole area. So I had to be more specific. The cop shows up and then another cop shows up. So there's two cop cars and they're, I'm, I'm telling them my story. You know, hey, I showed up. My truck that I parked here three, four days ago is now gone. You know, there's no glass here. There's no evidence. I don't know what else to do, bro. And so they look at me and they must have thought I was stupid or something. Or they thought maybe I was just confused and they're asking me, 
Are you sure you parked your truck in this location? Maybe you, you didn't park it in a different station and, you know, by chance. And I'm like, nope, I am 100% sure I parked in this parking lot in that spot. So I tell them what my truck looks like and has the camper shell. You can't miss it. It looks like an old man's truck. And one of the other cops drives off and goes to the other stations in the area to check to see if there's a vehicle that matched the description of my truck. So I finally feel and realize I'm coming to terms that my truck was stolen. Now how could this be? It's not supposed to happen to me because i only seen it happen to other people. Yeah, it happened to me. I realize now that I am a victim of a crime. As much as I don't want to be a victim, I am a victim of a crime now. <laughs> Bring in the lights, turn on the camera. I'm ready for my lifetime uh, docu-series here. So anyways, the cop that first showed up there, he gave me a ride home and he gave me his card with his uh, number or whatever and... He said, yeah, just uh, keep in touch, call in about, you know, every week or so and check in to see. And, you know, we'll be, we'll be on the lookout for it and uh, we'll keep an eye out for it. And I'm like, OK, cool. You know, now at this point, I didn't know that uh, the frequency of cases of cars being stolen, being resolved was so low. So I was in high hopes that 100 percent they would find my truck eventually and everything would be honky dory. Well, there was some news for myself that I thought that was going to go that way. Not! Now, was my truck ever found? Well, I did as much investigating that I could. I called the metro offices, and this lady picks up, and she says, Hello? I said, Hi, uh, my truck was stolen from the long-term parking lot. Now, could you possibly be able to look throughout these three days to see if any activity was happening around my truck in this parking lot. Okay, what's your name and your number? Okay, here's my name, here's my number. Okay, we'll look into it. Bye. Last thing I heard from them. I called up a few more times and all I got was nothing. Just the phone kept ringing. So very reassuring. Thank you, uh, Metro. I really do appreciate uh, how much you do care about your customers. So there I was without a vehicle once again and needing a vehicle to get to work and back. So I hitch rides with people, get dropped off when I could. Everybody that's ever helped me, thank you for giving me rides. Much appreciated. And all this time being without a vehicle once again... And after my last one being stolen, I had so many thoughts going through my head. I would always think about who this person or these people were, these question mark people. As much as I could wrap my brain around it and find out who they were, inevitably I couldn't find out who they were. And I would get so angry, you know, like I wasn't rich by any means. I was working my ass off. And for my own hard-earned money, I would pay extra to make sure I'd pay off this truck. And so many hours of my sweat and blood went into paying off this truck, putting work into it, all for it just to be taken. And everybody's just like, well, I don't know what happened. You want to see if there is somebody out there that has all the answers and someone's going to find out and they're going to work hard for you and get down to the bottom of it because... All the other crimes happening, they're really going to get down to your truck that's worth less than $6,000 and really find out who stole your truck. No, it's, I mean, it's really disheartening when there's something that you worked really hard for, you put money into it, money that you really put in the time to make, and you pay this thing off and someone just takes it all from you. You know, it just guts you to a certain extent and there's no... It's just something that can never be resolved. So week by week, I would call the police station. Nope, haven't found it. Nope, nope, nope. And it got to the point to where after a month, they said, well, when we find it, we'll call you, okay? We will call you. Spoiler alert. They never called me, and my truck was never found. So there you go. I never saw my truck again when I left that night to get on the train. And it's just one of those things, when you're very careful, even you make sure everything's locked and all that, but you gotta realize that as much as you think everyone is like you and they'd all think that they'd do the right thing and, you know, they wouldn't steal something, 
there are other people out there that don't have uh, your best interests in mind. So you got to keep that in mind and realize it, it could happen to you. Like it happened to me. Most of the time, majority of the time, most stolen vehicles are never found again. And you're lucky if it is found again. And in workable condition, not at the bottom of a lake. So to this day, I still think about whatever happened to my truck. It probably got drove into some chop shop and got a new paint color. Uh, A lot of the things taken off of it, probably the camper shell. It was probably used for some illegal activities. And, you know, there was no alarm on it. It was just a 1991 Silverado truck. As I've thought about it over the years, I think about how did they steal it without glass? I mean, were they that careful where if they broke the glass, they would have swept up the pieces and fully disposed of it? No, obviously. So the only thing I could think of is that they wound up breaking the camper shell window that would flip up and they crawl in that way. And so it'd be less noticeable them standing right outside the door of a truck. They'd be hiding within the camper shell in the back of the cab, and they just break the back cab window and crawl in through the back window that way and then hotwire it and drive off. I think about all the stuff that was in my truck, and I think about them going through it and looking at it and throwing it in the trash, and it just angers me to no end. But it, what are you going to do about it? You, as much as you want to think about, oh, that was 10 years ago now. And, um, but back then, you know, I'd think about it and be like, hmm, I, I need to find these people. But there's nothing you can do. The cops can't do nothing. The train company, they didn't care. And so the next step you can do is just go to your insurance company and claim that your truck was stolen. Which leads us to another part of this fun story. So, after about a month of no news of my truck being found or anything, it was time to claim my truck being stolen to my insurance company. The worth of my truck, I still put, throughout the years, I only put 10,000 miles on it. So, by the time it was stolen, it was only at about 54,000 miles. And boy, oh boy, don't you just love insurance companies? Oh, they're just the best. They always, they're they trying to make sure you're covered, right? Mm-hmm, yeah, sure. With as much money, the thousands of dollars I've put towards vehicle insurance over the years, never claimed anything. So by the time when something that was that rightfully happened to me, it was time for me to claim it, They nickel and dimed my ass all the way as much as they could. So, call up the lady. She was stern. Just just a real bitch. And she asked me, okay, so when was it stolen? I said a month ago. And she said, yeah, we usually wait about a month until if you get any news and then you could claim it. I said, yes, it's been a month since it's been stolen. So that's why I'm calling you now, sweetheart. Okay. And then she goes through the whole thing. She asks me, what was the condition of the truck? It was immaculate because I took care of it. The old man who owned it before me took care of it. So very nice and uh, would have lasted me another 15 to 20 years. It would have been a very nice truck to have, but... Fortunately, it was stolen. Okay, how many miles on it? 54,000, you know, something like that. We're rounded up to 55,000. Why not? Are you sure? I said, yes. The woman thought I was lying that it had such low mileage. Like, that was an unbelievable thing. And she said, well, trucks at that year and that age, the lowest we could go to a payout is... The minimum 100,000 miles or more. So you're going to get an insurance claim of a payout of a truck that's 100,000 miles because we can't go any lower than that because blah, blah, blah. And needless to say, they thought I was lying. <laughs> they asked me what kind of radio I had in it. Um, a lot of other things. Uh, what were the tires? I said I put brand new tires on it. That's $800 right there. And you know, sadly, I think about it, maybe that was the reason why my truck was stolen, just for the brand new tires. Anyways, my truck, if I were to give a rough estimate, mileage and everything else, 
five thousand dollars something that i paid for decent price upwards of six thousand dollars it was worth lady said all right well uh we'll get back to you the next couple days and see what we could uh figure out here and i'm like okay so i'm thinking maybe i'm gonna get screwed and it's gonna be four thousand they're gonna give me four grand for it and wouldn't you know they get back to me a couple days later and they say all right, we'll give you 2100 for it. It's the best we can do with all our calculations on this end. And I'm thinking, what am I going to do, bargain with them? It's not like they're buying my truck from me. And then also, here's the kicker. They needed the title to the truck, so they would own the truck regardless. Even if it's stolen, they don't even have it. They'd have the title of it. And so they needed the title, and I'm a young guy you know, I, I took the title and I threw it in a file cabinet after I paid off the bank. The loan in the bank gave me the title. And I'm like, okay, should be in that file cabinet. I'm going to look for it and I'll mail it to you guys. Then you could give me the check. That's going to be another month of me bumming rides from people until everything gets through and I could possibly buy a vehicle. So that'll be another couple weeks. So six weeks out. All right, let me try to find that title. As my luck would have it, I go and I look in this little file cabinet I have in the closet where the title was, where I thought I had put it. It's not there. Where did it go? I don't know. It probably poofed the same time my truck went poof and disappeared too. I I tore everything apart in the house trying to find that damn title and I couldn't find it anywhere. So... I had to pay another $150 or something like that and get a brand new title uh, typed up and everything at the place, the title place. They have those. So that was more money I had to pay from something that happened to me, the victim paying more money now to get the little chunk of change that he's getting ripped off from from the insurance company. And oh God, it was such a bad time. I haven't thought about this in such a long time, but... God, that sucked. So anyways, I wound up getting the check, the measly 2100 This insurance company happily is out of business. I'm glad, good riddance, burn in hell, as the kind folks all around the world would say. Yeah, I'm, I'm now with State Farm. I'm happy with them. So I took the $2,100 and I put it towards the car that I bought and I still drive to this day. And uh, I've had it for 10 years and... Knock on wood, it won't get stolen. Uh, the good thing is it has a built-in car alarm and, um, yeah, lots of features, uh, anti-theft features. So made sure I got that this time, and that, that's about it. That is the story of my truck being stolen. It's a very crappy thing to happen to somebody, and uh, especially if you really worked hard to pay off your car and it just gets taken from you. The only way your stolen vehicle is ever going to be found is if it is dumped off the side of the road and someone finally drives up to it to check it out. They're not going to be actively out there, every single person on the force, looking for your vehicle. And mind you, I paid full premium insurance for my truck, so it wasn't just liability. So, you know, if my truck did get stolen, it was supposed to be covered. Needless to say, yeah, they cover it. They cover maybe about a third of what it's worth, and that's about it. So having the situation I had when you get your vehicle stolen, nobody, it's never found. There's no closure. You never found out whatever happened to it until all your belongings inside of your vehicle. You never know whatever happened to it. Some of the stuff in there was sentimental stuff. You know, I had some uh, Christmas presents in there, and it was... <sighs> Uh, yeah, it, it just sucks. <laughs> I guess what I could take from this now is it's given me a podcast episode worth of uh, material. So that's that's the only thing, if there is any silver lining, which there isn't. But at least uh, it's a nice story now that I could tell. A bad story, but it's a, it's a story. So there you go. If you ever wind up in my spot and you wonder what will happen next... That's a real life account for you. You could take home, put it in the bank, park it in the parking lot, and um, it won't get stolen. It's always going to be there. All right, that's the story of my truck getting stolen. 